little man said he wants to give Fred Bear a big kiss? On three, one, two. Was that the bite of 87? And with that, I'd like to welcome you to my second theory video about the indie horror series Five Nights at Freddy's. This video will be a continuation of the first theory video in which I talk about the year FNAF 1 takes place. To clarify and answer any questions regarding the timeline around FNAF 1, I will do more videos in the future discussing and expanding upon the overall FNAF timeline with my first video being the foundation. Today I'll talk about the scariest and arguably one of the most mysterious FNAF games of all time, which would be Five Nights at Freddy's 4. First of all, we need to distinguish between the actual gameplay and the minigames. Why that is the case will be explained later on in this video. We seem to play as a child in our room, which has a closet up front, two doors on the sides, and a bed behind which needs to be viewed regularly to prevent any potential threats to engage. In the first few nights, you will have to face nightmarish versions of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, whereas you need to check the left door for Bonnie and for Chica the right door. Foxy will try to sneak into your closet, which you have to prevent by hearing his footsteps, while with Freddy, you need to flash your light at the freddles, which appear on your bed, and you need to try to not stand in the same place for too long. Why I am precisely informing you about their behavior will also be relevant later on in this video. Just keep their basic game mechanics in mind for now. In the fifth and sixth night, another entity will appear who seems to be a nightmarish version of Fredbear, and in night seven and eight, a dark and transparent version of that same entity will appear also known as Nightmare. After you complete the nights, minigames will show you up where you play as a small child with a striped t-shirt and brown hair. We seem constantly afraid and crying, either being locked up in rooms or being jump scared by his older brother Foxy Bro or Michael Afton. The child is also called the crying child on a regular basis. He's often believed to be the one you play as in the FNAF 4 gameplay. We discover that on the day of his birthday, Foxy Bro and his friends decide to play a prank on the terrified poor child, so they lift him up and shove his head in Fredbear's mouth. To their shock and surprise, Fredbear's jaw had the power to completely crush the child's skull and cause severe head trauma. It is then believed that he gets rushed to the hospital and during his treatment he remains in critical condition, so he spends his last eight days in a coma. While he's in a coma, he apparently experiences these nightmares with the nights becoming progressively more difficult. Many people believe that Nightmare is representing the Grim Reaper because he only starts appearing in the last few nights right before his death. In the last minigame, we get to see the Fredbear plush talking to the crying child. Due to the change of text color during his speech, and due to the fact Michael has the same grey text colour like the text has in the beginning of his speech, people think these speeches come from Michael and William while being next to his hospital bed, with Michael apologising to his younger brother, and William promising his son to put him back together. The lines, Can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. And I'm sorry, belong to Michael. Well, the lines, You're broken. We are still your friends. Do you still believe that? I'm still here. And I will put you back together, come from William. Which they apparently do, 
by communicating to the crying child through the threadbare plush. And with that, it seems solid. The crying child is indeed the one we play as in FNAF 4. There can't be anything that can disprove that, right? Finish this. I'm about to end this man's whole career. Unfortunately, I have to tell you that the presenter's theory is pretty outdated, with a lot of flaws that came from future books. The Barnacles! Oh no, we heard stopped! Look and already with the game itself. Now, I would like to provide you with the theory that not only I, but many other famous FNAF theorists believe to be true with proof, obviously. Remember when I talked about the game mechanics of the core 4 Nightmare animatronics? Let's compare it with the original 4 animatronics and their behavior slash game mechanics in FNAF 1. Bonnie attacks you from the left, Chica from the right. You need to check on Foxy so he does not run to your office, and then you have Freddy punishing you for using too much power. Do you notice something? The FNAF 1 animatronics and the FNAF 4 core animatronics have very similar game mechanics. They behave very similarly. This suggests that the nightmares might not come from the crying child's views, but rather from the view of someone who used to work as a night guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Guess who that person is? I give you three seconds. One, two, three. And the answer is... Michael Afton. Don't believe me? Here are more examples why the one we play as in FNAF 4 can't be the crying child. Sometimes, when you flash the light at the bed, you can see flowers, pills, and an IV bag. How can the crying child dream of those things when he doesn't even know he is in a hospital since he is in a coma, therefore isn't able to know what lies next to his hospital bed? Heck, how is he able to even see his hospital bed in the first place? Still don't believe me. Here's something better. We're sometimes able to hear weird distorted sounds playing. When you try to decode it by reversing the sound and slowing down the pace, you can hear phone guy making a call. It's not just a random call. It's his first ever phone call in FNAF 1 during your first night shift. Here's the distorted sound. And here's the decoded sound. This leads me to a question. How in the living hell would the crying child be able to hear phone calls from decades in the future since he dies in 1983? Now to the biggest evidence, the survival logbook. This book is one of the most important books for the FNAF lore and overall franchise. While it looks goofy from the outside, uh, like the dabbing chica, some of the details finally give us an answer to questions we have been asking ourselves for years now. In the beginning page, we already discovered that the book previously belonged to Michael because we see his crossed out name in it. Not only that, but in the book, we see his favorite therapeutic music being casual bongos, something only Michael could have heard because we get to see him listening to this music in the sister location elevator after hand unit autocorrects his input for the music you'd like to hear during the elevator ride. So it's obvious that the lockbook belonged to Michael, but what has it anything to do with FNAF 4 and its timeline? Well, in one of the pages, he's being asked to draw his recent dreams, and in response to that request, he draws a nightmare threadbare. This clearly shows us that not only does he know about the nightmares, it also proves to us that he was the one who experienced these nightmares all along. If we now combine all the evidence including the similar game mechanics between the FNAF 1 and FNAF 4 animatronics, 
we can conclude that the gameplay of Five Nights at Freddy's 4 takes place right after the events of Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Therefore, Michael dreams of the original four who are haunting him in the first few nights like they did during his night shift. During his visit to the hospital to look after his younger brother, he probably saw the IV bags, the flowers and the pills next to the bed. These things alongside the appearance of Nightmare Fredbear show that he still hasn't got over the death of his younger brother, especially since he is responsible for its demise in a certain degree. He feels guilt and regret for the tragedy that has happened so many years ago and now these feelings and thoughts are haunting him in his dreams. Nightmare has no reason to be the personification of death anymore, so he needs a different purpose. Interestingly enough, in the FNAF 4 files, there's a file called Shadow Freddy Extras. When you click on it and then click on zero, you get a Nightmare PNG. This implies that Shadow Freddy is Nightmare who managed to enter Michael's dreams and manipulate it a bit to cause him appearing in his nightmares as this reskin transparent version of Nightmare Fredbear. In Fazbear Fright's story, Hide and Seek, you also get to see Shadow Bonnie entering the protagonist's dreams and taking a nightmarish form when it becomes angry. If you question why exactly Shadow Freddy enters his dreams, I can possibly make another video about that, but for now just remember that he has the ability to enter people's dreams. With everything covered now, I have nothing else to say except for letting you know that you can leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'd also appreciate a like to show me if you seem to enjoy this kind of series or not, but regardless, you can definitely expect a part 3 in the future. Until next time, cheers.